Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In a recent solar system tourism livestream, I needed to send some supplies over to a station around the moon, the Amaz station around the moon, one of three stations around the moon that we have. And so I have this 30 ton supply vessel with fuel. It was also supposed to resupply some fuel to a vessel around the moon. And I didn't really want to use a normal SLS. 30 tons to the moon, of course, SLS comes to mind, but I didn't want to use the upper stage. And so I wondered what would happen if we omitted the upper stage of SLS. So it's just the core and the boosters, but with a catch. Well, eventually more than just one catch, but we are putting the shuttle mice on and so that we can recover the RS-25s. It's not my fault they don't seem to have the budget for recoverable shuttle mice to carry the RS-25s back, but anyway, I use them. And I've got a Hydrolox engine at the center there that has 463 seconds of ISP and delivers about 400 kilonewtons. And the goal here is to separate the shuttle mice in lower orbit so that they can return. And that engine at the bottom there will be the sole engine to push us on TLI. Now, logically speaking, there's no way that this should be able to push 30 tons to TLI uh, because normally SLS requires an upper stage for that kind of load. And even the EUS, its larger upper stage, uh, can only do 37 tons or so. Anyway, here goes booster separation. And we're carrying the shuttle mice and everything, so that's an extra load. But I wanted to see how much spare Delta V we would have once we reached orbit. And based on that, I had a different idea in mind. So here we are making orbit. And the question is, after we separate off the shuttle mice, right? They are an extra load. Those engines are heavy. The shuttle mice themselves are heavy. They have fuel to return. And here we see we have 1400 meters per second in the stage left. And that's not enough to go to the moon. That For that, we need 3,100. With the payload's fuel, we would have had enough, but we weren't wanting to use that because we were wanting to use that to capture around the moon and rendezvous. So the actual idea is to use a Timberwind 45. But the trick here is we're going to have to underfuel the oxygen tank. Right, the Timur 45 is a nuclear engine. It will only use the liquid hydrogen from this liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen rocket. And so we are diminishing the amount of liquid oxygen to effectively create two stages out of one stage. Uh, the RS 25s would separate and go back with the shuttle mice, and we will have the Timur do the translunar injection. But I needed to basically cut down the RS-25 portion of the Delta V by 1400 meters per second, which is what we had surplus, and see if the liquid hydrogen that remained would be enough to supply the Timberwind with the Delta V to get to the moon. Now, along the way, I found out that we were carrying way too much RCS fuel. We, were, we needed RCS to turn the huge stage uh, so I have RCS thrusters at the bottom, but I carried too much MMH in Mon3. I thought the utilization was set right when it wasn't. So, actually we were carrying a heavier load last time than we should have been. So that changed the numbers somewhat. But here we go with the shuttle mice again, with normal uh, boosters. This isn't any special setup on the SRBs. So five segment boosters. And there we go, huge thrust weight ratio. One good thing that we get out of this, and one benefit, is that because we're not carrying the heavy upper stages, we have a lot of thrust weight ratio getting off the ground. That might be a bad thing in terms of vibrations, but we'll set that aside for now. But yeah, so we have a benefit in terms of thrust weight ratio, and that can make us more efficient. So off go the fairings. And here the shuttle mice are getting us into orbit, with some to spare, you'll note. About uh, nearly 600 meters per second in the hydrolox portion of it. So we'll have to dump the oxygen, because we don't want to carry useless oxygen over to the moon. So as I check things out, and eventually se separate off the shuttle mice, we will use ship manifest to dump the oxygen as well. 
and I discovered that one shuttle mouse actually has too much propellant. It's only supposed to be partly filled because it's only fully filled in order to deorbit the entire stage. Uh, if it had to deorbit the core tank, then we have the shuttle mice using the rest of the fuel. Anyway, so here we are on TLI. You can see there's still a little bit of liquid oxygen there, actually. So, oh, uh, yeah, actually, maybe I forgot to drain all of it. Um, I'll have to think about that. But, okay, we have some oxygen. Now, one of the nice side effects of this system, having the nuclear engine on the core there, is that potentially we could make a wet workshop out of the liquid oxygen tank. In other words, make a station, a habitat out of the liquid oxygen tank because it's now not going, going to be used for propulsion. Oxygen isn't particularly volatile. Well, we probably have to be careful, but still. Um, we could use that oxygen tank, which is huge, as a habitat, and then replenish the fuel in the liquid hydrogen. Hydrogen isn't very dense, but it also isn't very heavy. Uh, so we could, with a 30-ton payload to the moon, we only need about 40 tons of liquid hydrogen. And that can easily be lifted up by multiple launchers. So, yeah, we can replenish the hydrogen load for translunar injection and maybe reuse this. Now, the wisdom of this is complicated. We would also have to insulate the tanks properly because they have to carry the hydrogen for a longer period of time. If we do translunar injection immediately, that's fine. And if we top off the tank right before we go, you know, in the refueling version of things, that would have to be the case if we don't have some way to mitigate boil off. But yeah, liquid hydrogen has to be kept really cold and so it likes to boil off very quickly. But anyway, here we go. It uh, worked out for us. I'm rendezvousing with the station. And so this is an interesting idea that I would like to work on a bit. The whole wet workshop liquid oxygen tank plus refueling the liquid hydrogen tank with the Timberwind at the bottom. Price-wise, the question is, is one nuclear engine that you're going to chuck pretty quickly, assuming that we don't reuse it, right? I mean, of course, reusing it would be very beneficial, but let's say we were going to chuck it and it goes into interplanetary space after it swings by the moon, right? The stage keeps going. Um, if we're not going to reuse the stage and we're going to chuck the nuclear engine, would a nuclear engine that was only certified for a short period of time, a few hours, be necessarily more expensive than the EUS? That's the question. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that is. But it is an interesting question. We don't have a lot of experience with pricing nuclear engines, after all. Um, presumably, they are going to be very expensive, and we don't want to chuck them. But compared to an entire stage with four RL-10s, and as long as we're not intending to use the stage for years, right? Uh, we start it up and it's going to run for a fairly short period of time. I don't know. So anyway, there we are docking. I couldn't use the docking board I was intending to, but I sort of figured that that was the case, so I had to use the claw to dock to that mod station. And there it is. Uh, well, it's an interesting contraption. One of three stations we have around the moon in the solar system tourism install. A very complicated install indeed, requiring many interesting ways of doing things. But with that, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and this idea. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.